Welcome to the Red Clinic Podcast. I'm Dr. Schwalen, and I'm a licensed psychologist, expert in the treatment of eating disorders. And today I have a very special guest, Miss Clarissa Wickland. Hi. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Tell the audience a little bit about yourself, how we know each other, and then what we're going to talk about today. Sure. So uh, like she said, my name is Clarissa. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist associate here at Next Steps. So I have my master's in marriage and family therapy, and I'm working towards my hours to get my full licensure as a marriage and family therapist. And you've been a part of our team for a while, and we love having you. Yes. So I've been working at Next Steps for a year and a half, um, and I do see couples, individuals, families. And sometimes red clinic clients. Yes. Uh-huh. And you join us in rounds um, most of the time every week, yeah. and, and you help us with our our client care. Yeah. So thank you for all your contributions and all the wonderful work you do. And so today we're going to actually talk about yoga. Mm-hmm. And let's tell the audience a little bit about your interest and background with yoga I'll say a little bit about mine too, and then we'll talk about how it all relates to eating disorder recovery. Sure. Um, so I've been, I mean, really, you know, into yoga, I would say my whole life. I mean, my mom um, really, you know, introduced it to me at a very young age, uh, and I would watch her uh, do a lot of yoga uh, stuff when I was young. But I would say I've been getting into, seriously into yoga for probably about six years, um, and it has just been something that's just of really, really great value to me um, and has helped me, I mean, even in just, you know, um, my relationship with myself, my self-esteem, my self-worth, you know, it's just like I could go on and on and on about the benefits that it's provided me in my life. But I mean, it's also helped with like just my overall health, you know, and taking care of my body in that way as well. Okay. And so are you pursuing any kind of like um, certifications or licensure or, uh, are you an instructor? Like, uh, like speak to Mm -hmm. that a little bit. Um, so I have led groups in the past. I don't have any certifications right now, but that is my goal. Uh, once I get my full license as a marriage and family therapist, my goal is to go for my yoga teacher license and then to eventually become a yoga therapist. So kind of combining my two worlds, uh, there. Um, and yeah, I have led groups before. I mean, you know, I let them know I'm not a licensed therapist, I mean, a um, yoga uh, instructor, um, but I did an internship at a homeless shelter. And for the women there, we had a once a week class that I would help lead um, every now and then. And just, I loved it. I loved it, loved it. Um, and I've attended, I mean, several, most of the time I do, you know, um, my own, just my own yoga at home, but I have done some cl- several classes at different studios and things like that. Um, groups, you know, I love doing yoga outdoors. So anytime I can find a class that's going on outdoors in front of a garden or whatever, you know, that's uh, that's where I'm happiest. Okay. So you really love to be in nature too. Yes. Right. Okay. Sure. So I used to do yoga a lot too. I still do it sometimes. Um, and there's all different kinds of yoga. You know, you said studio or at home and Uh, I actually used to do, like I started out years and years ago with Bikram yoga, that's hot yoga. And then I merged over to sunstone yoga and I did a bunch of yoga there for years and years. And I got all the little bracelets and all that stuff. And then I was approached several times to actually do the instructor, you know, course and take it to the next level. And I just never did. I, I don't really want to, but I love that you do. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, and now doing yoga at home. I think it's interesting because if you try to find or you look up yoga videos, I mean, you can get yoga for everything, yoga for back pain, yoga for wellness, yoga for meditation, yoga for mind body connection, yoga for weight loss. Mm -hmm. Right. And so that's why I'm really excited that we're talking about this today on the Red Clinic podcast, because our audience out there, you know, those of you affected by eating disorders, either you yourself or you have a loved one that's that's struggling or in recovery from an eating disorder. The yoga for weight loss comes up a lot in my therapy sessions and our dietitian sessions um, because of all the benefits associated with yoga. Mm -hmm. Um, And then the I think the the temptation because of the eating disorder to really be more focused on the weight loss issue um, as a way to use yoga. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we do. So so let me just stop there. So when you're looking at yoga mm-hmm. and trying to do some at home, yeah. what would you normally follow? Um, as far as videos? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, usually I'm looking for things that are about um, 
stretching, like flexibility, things like that. Um, because I know how much, how helpful it is for me, for my attention, for my memory, for my focus to be able to get that movement in my body. So really that's what I'm most focused on, right? Um, I enjoy the really lengthy yoga videos that aren't necessarily, you know, incorporating any kind of like hit, uh, workouts or, you know, um, Sometimes there's workouts out there that, that involve yoga poses, right? But they're, but they're really, really intense workouts. I enjoy the ones where you're really connecting to your body and you're just focusing on how good it feels to even move your body. Okay. And I'm really glad you said that because it's, I think, important just to educate the audience a little bit that um, even with my knowledge of yoga and I know yours, that those terms like yoga for weight loss or whatever, that can be just a marketing ploy, right? And what you talked about, like HIT or more intense workouts that just use yoga poses is not necessarily the yoga we're talking about. No. We're talking about like true mind-body connection, the true benefits of understanding that your body was designed to move mm -hmm. and stretch mm -hmm. and to do those things that essentially kind of decompress our our bones and our muscles because we sit, you know, most of the day or whatnot. Mm -hmm. And so really like a healing type of yoga Absolutely. is what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Getting the oxygen flowing through your body and I mean, essentially feeding your brain, you know, I mean, when, when we take a look at some, some of the, you know, um, really more low key, you know, poses, um, or yoga flows, right. That for some people they consider them boring, right. Um, and usually it's because they're not moving, you know, fast enough and we're used to this kind of fast pace, you know, and that's one of the reasons I love yoga. It forces you to slow down. It really forces you to actually tune in to your body. What's going on in my body and how can I listen to those signals? And I love that you said that because the yoga we are talking about is the yoga that, you know, you learn these skills on the mat, right? And the hope is that you generalize those skills into real life. Absolutely. But it's all happening. The therapy is happening on the mat, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's that's kind of like a tip there, that differentiation. If, if you're in recovery and you really want to make yoga practice a part of your recovery, you want to really look at, well, what's what's really being advertised here? What am I really trying to do if I'm going to pursue yoga as a form of mindful and joyful movement. Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, um, you know, I, uh, love, um, one of, one of my clients has, has said before when she really got into yoga, she, she found it in her recovery is, you know, this is a way that I can honor my body instead of punishing my body. And when I hear yoga for weight loss, that's exactly what it sounds like to me. It sounds like, um, this is for the goal of correcting, fixing and punishing my body, you know, for the way that it is right now. And when I think of, you know, the yoga that we're talking about, right, it's exactly what that client said, right? It's actually about honoring where is my body at today, you know, and what can it do for me instead of what is it, what can't it do for me or what does it not look like, right? Or those kinds of things. Like it's really forcing you to actually appreciate, you know, where your body is right now. I love that. So instead of trying to focus on change right. and being unhappy with something and changing that thing, we're focusing on like radical self-acceptance. Yes. Which is that goes right back to the lesson that you talked about. You know, you're learning that lesson on the mat. Mm -hmm. What are other situations that are going on in your life that you can appreciate something about it rather than focus on what it is not? Right. And, and, you know, the yoga we're talking about, I don't even know what to call that. It's like <laughs> healing, vinyasa, flowing, yes, whatever. Uh -huh. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's the recovery kind of yoga, the one that we want to promote on the Red Clinic podcast. Mm -hmm. It's going to, when, when you're walking through poses, you're going to hear the yoga instructor say things like, just breathe through that, yeah. you know, don't stress or where are you at with your balance today? Just take note of that, mm -hmm. right? Reflect on it, observe it, right. be there with it, but don't judge yourself for it. Right. Oh, you fell over, get up get back into the pose. Mm -hmm. And so it's that non-judgment, that being present in the moment, slowing down, mm -hmm. right? Uh, that can be so powerful as a real life lesson in yeah. everyday life. For sure. I mean, um, I have a personal experience with that. I attended a public uh, yoga class that was out, outdoors and it was on a pedestrian bridge, 
right? So it was like a bridge going over a road, but it was only pedestrians, which means there were like a thousand people, <laughs> you know, walking and walking their dogs and running and riding their bikes, right? Like um, at one point in the class, right, this guy walked by with this huge boom box. I mean, it was like we time traveled, right? This huge boom box on his shoulder and just blaring out like rap music, right? And the instructor doesn't have like a speaker or anything. She's just yelling at us, right? The next pose to go to in. And what she didn't do is she didn't go up to the guy and immediately say, excuse me, we're having a you know very private and quiet yoga class. She said, this is part of your experience. Breathe it in. Okay. Right? Stop fighting it. You know, don't try to fight it. Breathe it in as the experience and just notice like, what is that like? for mm -hmm. you to even experience that right now. And That's I just thought awesome. that was beautiful, you know? That's so perfect. Yeah. I mean, she just took it and ran with it mm -hmm. because she's a true yogini, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's, it's all about going with that flow and, and not fighting it. I love mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And then what are some other ways that you think you've used yoga that you wouldn't mind sharing? Sure. I mean, for me, um, you know, uh, I use it a lot of times for an emotional release which I think is a lot of times what people stumble across <laughs> that they weren't expecting mm -hmm. when they get into this practice, right? Um, I think what most people don't know is our bodies tend to store, right, different experiences, different emotions, right, different things that have happened to us. Our body has a way of storing that. And yoga can just be like this beautiful way of releasing that and allowing it to flow, right, in a healthy way, right? Mm -hmm. um, in that same class, uh, she took us into pigeon pose, and pigeon pose is a specific yoga pose that releases the hips. The hips are a place in our body that stores a lot of vulnerability and a lot of emotions, right? And most of the time, we don't even realize that it's doing that. And that happened to me, right? I didn't even realize I was, I didn't even know what it was. But once we got into that pigeon pose, I broke out, and I just sobbed. <laughs> and I'm, I'm in a public yoga class, right? But I cried for the rest of the session. And I, I just flowed through the, again, it was part of the experience, right? She saw me crying and, you know, she kept moving on. You know, it's just, she knows, right? That like sometimes whenever we access some of these poses, it can just be like a release in that way. I've dealt with uh, loss last year, um, a pretty significant loss in my life. And, um, what I did is I, you know, found a specific yoga uh, flow online that was for emotional release. And what I did during that entire flow, I mean, it was a 45 minute flow and I took my time with it. And what I would do is when I felt an emotion come up, um, I would pause the video and I would immediately journal out everything that was happening for me, everything that was coming up. And I just can't tell you how healing that was for me because I wasn't pushing it down. I wasn't burying it or, or ignoring it, right? I was allowing it, whatever it was, whatever it needed to come up, right? I was allowing it to release. And I wouldn't have been able to do that truly, you know, without going through that flow. And it was a way of me giving back to myself as well. That's amazing. So you were, you were looking at it, dealing with it and healing it through yoga. So mm -hmm. deal, heal, right? Yeah. And and what you're talking about is this mind body connection, because in eating disorder treatment, we talk about that all the time with our clients. And it's so hard sometimes for them to understand what that even means. Sure. And you just illustrated it so perfectly, I think. I mean, this is one way to become truly connected with, you know, our tendency, like you said, might be to ignore it, stuff it down, distract. And so we're doing everything we can to not connect mm -hmm. with all of this emotion that's being stored in our bodies. And then what you did is as soon as something came up, you made that intention. You were very conscientious about, let me pause here and observe this, write up everything that's coming out. So you connected that like logical space with the emotional space and you were able to process through it in a yoga flow. Mm -hmm. That's mind body connection. Yeah. Right. And taking the time, making the effort yeah. to do that for yourself mm -hmm. is so loving and honoring. Yes. It's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, absolutely. Now, what, what do you think, and I might be putting you on the spot here, and if I am, just throw it right back to me. But um, for clients who may be uh, triggered by yoga, mm -hmm. right? So with eating disorders, we know that a lot of times... Um, like you said, exercise is very punishing. It's, I need to change something about myself. And there's always that connotation of we exercise or work out to change the way we look, burn calories, et cetera. Mm -hmm. 
And we're being very intentional about saying, well, joyful movement or mind body connection or mindful movement, which is why are you truly doing something? You know, are you finding joy and, and enjoyment in the activity? Are you, are you moving your body because you're, you're having fun doing that or getting something beneficial out of it? Or are you doing it because you have this ultimate goal of changing the way you look? Right. And so yoga, even though we know it can be so healing, can be one of those activities that does trigger our clients who are in recovery. So what would you say to somebody like that? How would you want them to be thinking about that? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I certainly wouldn't want anyone to, you know, continue if you were having a really severe, like, you know, triggering experience. But I will say that yoga is a wonderful practice for getting back to the basics, right? So I would say if someone came to me and said, you know, this is just really triggering for me because, you know, I can't get into this pose and, you know, I should be able to, and, you know, I'm frustrated with my body because it can't do that thing that the girl on the video is doing, right? I would immediately tell them to go back to the basics and force themselves to really slow down because even in mountain pose, just standing still, right? Sometimes that's like one of the hardest poses for people and they don't even really realize it. Or right? savasana, or right? Sure. Yes, absolutely. So laying on your back for a few minutes and just staying there. Yes, yes. And just being in a meditative state, right? Um, so I think that's that's another really beautiful thing about it, right? Is you can, and some people do, use it as like a fun, like um, I'm going to challenge myself to get in, you know, uh, really work towards getting this pose, right? But you're right. It can easily turn into right? Getting frustrated and, you know, kind of having this relationship with it that, you know, what's wrong with my body that I can't do that, right? right? So that's when I would really, you know, encourage someone to go back to, hey, can we just go through a flow because it feels good and focus on how to, why does it feel good? How mm -hmm. does it feel good, right? And like, what's your body telling you today? How right. is it trying to communicate to you today? So refocus, go back to the basics. We talk about that on the Red Clinic podcast all the time. So I'm yes. glad you said that. Yeah. Um, you know, so that tri that trigger, we could be triggered, you know, in our eating disorder recovery because we want to use yoga to lose weight. We might get stuck there or we end up comparing ourselves to the, to the person on the video who's the instructor or the other people, if there are other people in the video, or we might be with our therapist who's trying to coach us through some yoga mm -hmm. and we get really self-conscious in front of that person too. Right. So how do you handle something like that? Um, I would say that's a perfect opportunity to work through that. Right. I mean, <laughs> um, it's your therapist, right? <laughs> yes. And that's how yoga therapy can be really, really beneficial and why I'm so interested in getting involved in that because there are so many things that are that can come up for you when you're just at home going through a flow, right? If you had someone like a therapist to be able to co to walk you through that and for you to be able to recognize like, hey, something just came up, you know, let's talk through that, mm -hmm. right? As we're flowing, you right. know, that kind of thing. Um, and I think that that could be just incredibly beneficial, you know, um, as far as being self-conscious, um, again, it's something to work through because everybody experiences that on some level, right? I think for, you know, people that struggle with eating disorders, obviously it's on a whole different level, right? And it's something to work through. Absolutely. I love that you said that. It's not something we have to like shy away from or mm -hmm. judge about ourselves. It's just, let's look at it. Yeah. Let's explore this and figure out how to get on the other side of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now just for you audience members out there, um, we're talking about yoga today as a healing and dealing kind of thing. Um, but also I hope you're hearing that we're being very careful about how we use it. And so I highly recommend for anyone who's in eating disorder recovery to not even pursue yoga until you've really explored that with your therapist and your family and your support team, because you don't want to jump into something if it's not the right time. But it's absolutely something that is worth looking at if it is the right thing for you and you've made that decision together with your recovery team.